Okay, I'm going to be uh, checking a couple antennas here. UHF, uh, VHF analyst from AEA. AEA, right? Yeah. Um, first, I'm going to show you my AEA uh, ice uh, hot rod. Here we go. Oh, by the way, this is uh, just a pad I'm using for a dummy load check. You can see the baseline is right on 50 there. And the load resistance is 50. So. Yeah, this is the backlight on, but I uh, see my scale here is 3.7. Centered on 146, and this 100 per dot means uh, 10 megahertz across the whole screen. So it's pretty wide, and 3.7. They set it for five. Okay, here's the five megahertz wide scale. Okay, see so it's the 2.4 scale. I have a bias down toward the low end because I had it on this radio. For doing low frequency stuff, I'll set it for 144. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here's the AEA hot rod, and that's a uh, SWR plot. Looks like there's a little on the low side, huh? But that's centered 144. I'll show you that the meter works. That's that's a top scale 2.6, then automatic. Okay, now we have SMA. Back to an end, back to that pad. It's a Miko pad, like that. It's anywhere, like 30 dB or something. Mm. You see, it's uh, back to 50 and it's flat lined SWR on 1.5 scale. I can't show you that works. Now, here's this antenna the Goya TM. I don't know if this is real or fake. NA 701. 144, 430, I'd say it's a 2 meter 440 antenna. Okay. Uh, if you have one of these, you can tell me if it's authentic or not. I'm going to show you how it performs, or lack of. Okay, this is 2 meters. That's 9.9 .9 SWR scale. SWR 146 7.3. I wouldn't use this on a radio. Uh, here's the weird part about it. I'll show you where it looks like it tunes up. It's not doing too bad. At 135.15. You understand the antenna? Okay, it brings up a little bit. Getting away from stuff. Let's see, let's see what that peak is. Look at that, 138.75, is it? 136.75. This antenna works incredibly good at that low frequency. SWR 1.1. But it says 442, right? Let's check 440. Okay, this is... Uh, 440 SWR is pretty flat, 3.8 or 3.6. Not horrible. Let me go a little wider band. This is 5 megahertz across the screen. Okay, it's still 440, but now I'm at 20 megahertz across the screen. So 430, 450. 3.8. I wouldn't say this. I wouldn't use this at uh, 440 either. It's like doing anything. Makes me wonder if this thing's really a aircraft antenna with a wrong label on it. Now, this is a stock antenna with the uh, I guess the 2 meter. I should tell you that actually the radio here which I will in a minute. This is 5 megahertz wide 146 so easily 144 to 148 and 2.7 not great but at least not too bad for the radio and it's very sensitive on the end, so apparently it's doing something. If I hold it up uh, 146, the SWR is up to 2.9 now. I wouldn't say that's very good either. Here's the radio. I'm looking at the standard horizon floating an H, HX300. Is that it? Yeah. Radio's light. It's nice. 
This is a make connector. Looks like it's got rubber all around. It's plastic, hard plastic there. Uh, supposedly, uh, this whole thing, if you drop it, oh, there's that, that's the light right there. The whole thing flashes red so you can find it. Looks like a pretty cool radio. Uh, I don't know why the antenna is such garbage. Okay, here's that little sh stubby duck out of its uh, radome, if you want to call it that. And this is a big spring. Load. Uh, I think that's not a load. I think it's just a uh, something. Keep maybe a load, maybe something tighter in the middle now, or maybe it's supposed to be the 440s. Wait, now this is just a. This is just, this is not dual band antenna as far as I know. If this is a stock antenna, it's supposed to be marine. So I'm stuck here on uh, what's this frequency? I put it on 158. Is that what it says? Yeah. I'm trying to keep it away from stuff. Let me turn this light on. Okay. You can see my glare. Doesn't seem to be real far off. Oh, up here it's not bad at all. Maybe just the radome is making a big difference. Like this, this antenna is not bad for 150. In fact, it's pretty good. I mean, the scale is still not that good. I mean, it's not great, but I'm not going to change impedance by cutting it, that's for sure. Let me put the rubber piece back on. I mean, well, whatever, forever, whatever happened, I put the rubber radome back on. And uh, it's way off too. So should I try cutting it shorter? Maybe that's squishing it down. I know it reaches pretty far up to the top. Maybe we'll chop a little off and put it back on again. Okay. Snips. Let's go about there. It's stubborn. Thing made out of. Mm. Mm. Damn. Yeah, they're probably not that great. But they weren't that bad. There we go. Let's see what that does, test the VR without this thing on first. Okay, here's what it looks like now. 156.8, 10 meg scale. Without the rubber on it. Let's throw the cap on and see where it goes. Okay, well that looks better. And a three. Yeah, let me cut a little tiny bit, maybe one more. One more rung off that spring. I might put it right in there, one or two. That's pretty good. That's 10 megs wide. So it's easily covering the marine 156, maybe a little biased more toward like 153. I'll cut another ring off. Look at that. I just cut uh, two more uh, turns off that spring. So it's probably about a total of five or six turns there. I would say that's pretty good. SWR is. Uh, 2.6, nothing to uh, clap over, but um, certainly not bad. 2.5, what a real ground next to my fingers, like a radio would be. Might come up a little bit, or down a little bit. Now if I do that, it actually gets worse, I need to bring it down more. I think I cut enough off. We'll let him see how he likes it. <laughs> 